the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you again, Bishop, and your dear wife. We really appreciate you. It's my joy to be here. I, I didn't get to hear what he was teaching, but just a few minute or two that I came in, just hearing the things that he was saying. Um, it is never God's desire that only a few people or just as select people seem like they were called of God and are doing great things. No. It is God's desire that in every territory there will be such a team of men and women of God doing mighty things for God. So when it looks as though God just picks one, two, three people per territory, it is not his will. It's just that many people are not willing to press. To the level that will allow them carry that grace we have a few minutes this morning and i pray something will come upon your life please lift your voice in one minute and cry and say father that which must come upon my life and my ministry Come upon me, O God. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, help us this morning name of Jesus we pray that by your power by your grace you will deposit something upon our lives and I pray that within these few minutes we will carry very strange graces in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen please sit down but be very sensitive we're here for a few minutes don't just write like Bishop said, trust God to see and hear. And information is what you hear, revelation is what you see. Hallelujah. I will stand upon my watch, Habakkuk said, and set myself upon the tower that I will see what he will say unto me. I felt stirred in my spirit to just challenge, this will be my last sermon and then we leave this city. But um, I have studied revivals. I have had the honor and the privilege of studying the moves of God. And like you always hear me say, I have also had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few people in life and in history who have been used as cutting edge tools. It seems to me like in every generation, God seems to find a few people sometimes as few as just a single person and he will invest his power and his grace and his anointing upon that one person or those few people and they seem to be the ones doing mighty and supernatural things for the kingdom within their lifetime and then many times after they pass on then you find out that um I hope you are listening that gentleman snapping focus on listening not snapping keep that camera and listen this is how people don't receive in meetings don't feel bad eh? I'm challenging you 
when you come let your heart be open snapping my clothes or snapping is not necessary there are destinies connected to you and when you come you open up your heart praise the lord are we together so there 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 is a requisite level of passion and hunger you must give your destiny if you intend to rise and you intend to be used by God I'm speaking to ministers and let me admit to you sincerely speaking many people are not serious I'm sorry to use that word forgive me but it's true many ministers are just joking they are not serious it's not an insult but it's true even in the secular there is a requisite level of commitment you must give life and destiny as musicians as footballers as actors sports people as soon as they win an olympic while the world is celebrating them they take a break for a few months and they are back preparing for the next four years but just because we have anointing just because we have the possibility of assistance by the holy ghost it has brought a lot of carelessness a lot of laziness you cannot change a generation with that kind of understanding i've studied revivals and i've studied the moves of god i have seen god do mighty and great and terrible things in righteousness with people and i made up my mind that in my lifetime i will see god move again in my days it was a commitment that i made from the depth of my heart but then I also discovered that for everything great and everything glorious including your salvation there is a price to pay I think the first destructive doctrine in the body of Christ is the fact that everything is a gift it's a very sincere doctrine but it's a dangerous one are we together now yes if everything is a gift what then is the reward for obedience Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all that I command thee observe and to do all not some observe and to do all that I command you this day that you shall be exalted on high above all the nations of the earth and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you will do and observe so I'll just share with us if you do not mind just in a few minutes a few principles that are responsible for hosting God and birthing genuine revival within a territory I believe it is the will of God to see us about on fire that it will get to a point where the nations will hear that there is a move of God happening in a, a region what is this that is happening salvations are happening prophets apostles rising mighty men of the spirit that your stadiums will be packed full with people who are who hunger after god young men on fire women on fire old men on fire practices that are demonic and occultic being crumbled by the authority of the church that someone can stand on his pulpit and while he's speaking altars are on fire in several regions the bible says it shall come to pass prophet Micah saw this that the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted above all the mountains and he says that the nations shall flow to it they will say come let us go to the house of god to the god of jacob and he will teach us his ways hallelujah that on sunday or whatever weekday the places are packed full not just with a crowd of people hungry and desperate people desperate people you're passing the market a salmon is playing different places have been shut down to become places of development places of worship that your leaders your politicians will stand openly in the name of the lord like daniel and call upon the god of heaven and when they say keep quiet you say that's how i came here revival and awakening 
I believe that the few principles that I will share with you, if kept, listen, men and women of God, God is counting on us for the transformation of our territories. You must look beyond your church, beyond your congregation, beyond your membership. You'll be committed to them administratively speaking, but the, the bigger picture should be Maranatha. God, come upon our land. Let our children not know, not forget the God that we serve. If you don't do that, there will come a generation. You see what is happening in the West now? There will come a generation that will say, I was from a lineage of one man called Smith Wigglesworth. I used to hear that my great-grandfather was healing the sick and that is none of my business. All I want to do is to just serve God or, or just live my life carelessly, sociologically speaking. May God forbid it that our children will forget our God. May God forbid it that one day to be your child that will bring police and say, shut this church. We have not found any relevance in society. Today, the government looks at the church almost like a nuisance. The moment they see the gathering of preachers, they just believe these are hungry, political type people scheming a way of manipulating money out of people. And yet the Bible says the definition of darkness is the world without us. So there are principles that we must keep. Hallelujah. The price for true revival. Just a few minutes and we'll pray. The first price for true revival in a life and a territory is the price of intimacy with God. The first price for true revival is not leadership. It's not membership. It is the price for genuine intimacy. John 14 and verse 21. He that keepeth my commands, the Bible says, he it is that loves me and I will love him and we will come to him and I will manifest myself to him. The first price to be used by God to shift systems and structures is not being a preacher. In fact, being a preacher can be the demon and the distraction to your becoming. The secret to be in ministry is to forget about ministry first and focus on his presence. Your passion. There are so many people who left God because they started ministry. Ministry became such an idol. Preaching engagement. Apostle Joshua Selman, you are busy. You are all over town preaching. And we call that breakthrough. That is the deception that dries our prayer life dries our word life dries our passion and our commitment do you know when you off a moving fan it will still be moving and yet there is no power in it again one of the most challenging statements in scripture is found in john chapter 2 the wedding in cana the bible says and the wine finished very dangerous statement the feast was still going on but the wine had finished you cannot have a feast without wine and yet the wine was finished yet churches were still being built and the wine finished and conferences were still being organized but the wine had finished the price of intimacy there is nothing and there is no one that sustains the ability to take the place of God in my life I would throw this mic a thousand times to preserve his presence. Please listen. The secret to be known is to be hidden. The Bible says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You must pant and test after the presence of God more than invitation more than a desire to be known do you know what intimacy does listen to my message the evidence of genuine intimacy with god there are certain indices i also recommend my message the secret place there are five or six things that show you that your secret place is healthy 
and alive the first of it is brokenness brokenness if it is the god of the bible you meet he will never leave you the way you are no matter what celebrity you are you don't come to his presence as a celebrity you don't come to his presence as apostle joshua selman uh -uh, uh -uh. brokenness lord i realize that i'm nothing without you there are people clapping outside but i'm not distracted by their uploads i come to you the one who picked me from nothing and even though you have helped me today i'm not stupid enough to forget where i brought you from, where you brought me from and god says you still remember even with the lifting you still remember even with the of men bless the lord oh my soul and forget not there is something about the deception of fame and money and results these things are powerful but you will you will be shocked the degree to which they will deviate your passion for god his presence becomes your habitation like the fish cannot survive outside water like other animals cannot survive within their habitat no believer talk more of a man of god can truly survive out of his presence i love i love i love your presence i love i love i love your presence i love i love i love you jesus i love i love your love for God you are in the secret place you forget about your sermon and your congregation oh God praise the Lord let me have a crowd oh God my name also must be mentioned and God says that's not the issue leave all those things let's talk your heart is corrupt your heart has tendencies do you know what it means to pastor millionaires and still remain a man of integrity do you know what it means to have a prophetic gift where you can see everybody's account and yet have the discipline to remain nobody was born with that ability by default it's the secret place that breaks and prunes you until you have that dimension of character in the spirit there are many people your remaining where you are was not caused by demons God vetted you and found out that the safest position for your spiritual health is where you currently are. Heaven has concluded based on their report that if you ever rise beyond this level, it will be a disaster both to you and the kingdom. Hallelujah. I told God whatever you will ever give me in this life that will steal away my love for you, I'm the one who is praying it in advance. May it never, not even come near my vicinity. The price of intimacy. The price of intimacy. Please, for some of us, God is speaking to you. Go back to where we started. Go back to how you started before I found you. When nobody knew your name. When no invitation was coming for you. When nobody was celebrating you. When you were not yet called prophet or apostle or pastor. When nobody had done it. Go back to that place. Go back to the back of that tree you used to pray alone with God. Where he found you. Go back to that place. You would pay money for a retreat and lock yourself. But right now God I'm busy. Let me finish my ministrations. I will attend to you. You cannot host the presence of God within a territory if you don't have a track record of being a man of his presence. You can fake power. You cannot fake relationship. I love, I love. 
I love, love your presence. Someone met me one day and said, Apostle, why is it that the moment you are coming into a meeting, people begin to fall down and shout and things begin to happen? And sometimes you are not even preaching. He said, give me that anointing. I said, there's no anointing for that. That one is the overflow of the secret place. That one is not an impartation you will receive. We have a lazy generation of people who do not want to spend time building. When you stay in the kitchen where they are cooking, if you stay long enough, praise God, the smoke. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Are we together now? The effulgence of his presence. That you become a man who does not just visit the secret place it is from there you administer the dimension of god committed to you more miracles will happen through your life unconsciously than consciously when you become a man of his presence i am telling you this your words will never become like the words of mere men no the challenge is many of us are very busy we must create time. The secret place is the place of pruning. Don't be embarrassed by what God tells you is wrong with you. Be rejoice because the all-seeing eye of God is purifying you like gold. There are times that men are clapping for you, but you get to the secret place and God says in the last two weeks, lust is already growing in your heart. You don't just say, ah, God, I'm, I'm, no, don't do that. I'm, I'm the head of counseling in my church. It is that deception that kills us. When you go to God, let your, he says, search my heart. Try my thoughts. If there is any wicked way in me. And then lead me to the way everlasting. Lord, check my heart. Is it lust? Is it pride? Is it arrogance? Is it vain glory? Is it a competitive spirit? what has crept his way into my heart and the all-seeing eye of his majesty comes you are doing very well in this area this area but in the last one month offense is growing in you and it's interrupting the flow of the anointing and you get down on your knees and say god if not you who is able to help me do i have any other god and when men are there concluding that this man cannot rise beyond this level you are there negotiating the next dimension of your fire and relevance Please, in one minute, lay your hands on your head and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, search my heart. Go ahead and pray. Return me back to the place of intimacy. Prune my heart of offense. Prune my heart from the spirit of lust. Prune my heart from pride and arrogance and vainglory. You may never know what is hiding in your heart waiting for your rising to reveal itself cry to the god of heaven leave preaching leave sermons leave church growth focus on your growth nevertheless the foundation of the lord standeth sure having this seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let every man that named the name of christ depart from iniquity but in a great house there are not only vessels of wood and clay but of silver and gold some unto honor and some unto dishonor it says if a man will purge himself that man will be a vessel unto honor meet for the master's use Shabranda katosa lika paruha sedeba Skadabareto ka shabranda katala katos For many of you this is what God has been waiting for He has used dreams to call you back to the secret place He has used prophecies to call you to the secret place But you are too distracted Oh Moses do you not see the burning bush The bush has been burning before you for months Calling you to that place of the altar again Hallelujah. The 
Bible says, and you shall seek me and find me. Jeremiah 29, 13. You will only find me when you seek me with all your heart. If you never truly find God, it's because you did not seek him with all your heart. Where your motive is purified. Can I tell you this? I stand before the God of heaven. I'm talking to leaders. I have no desire and no ambition to build anything for myself. No. I wake up to hundreds of text messages all over the world. Apostle, you are this. What a man of God. You are that. And sometimes I leave those texts before God. And I said, Lord, this is what deceived those who went before us. This is what destroyed them. They started like this. So before this, your son becomes a fool. Guard my heart quickly. So that the sincere applauds of men. Look, you have to be sincere with yourself. If you, know, if you want to remain, rising is easy. Remaining is where the stamina is. Ye who have continued with me. Are we blessed? The presence of God. Imagine, I always give this analogy. Imagine a husband and a wife. Do you know that when you build relationship with your wife or your husband or your children, you get to a point where there are names you call yourself that are tokens of your intimacy. Children have certain names they call their dad when they want to joke. A husband has a name he calls a wife when they are happy and they are just joking. This is what happens between you and God. When you become close, close to God in sincerity, there are names and there are signs he leaves with you as tokens of his presence. So you know when he has showed up in a meeting because he replicates the atmosphere of your secret place and you can say of a truth, he's here. It is in the secret place you will learn the kinds and the dimensions of anointings that are there. Most times people think these things are just impartations. When you say, oh, the anointing is here, the angelic realm, it doesn't just open just because hands are laid on you to have visions. No, sir. It is a product of growth. A herbalist does not need a relationship with you. You just come and meet him and say, I want money. And he says, bring this and that. He doesn't know your name. He doesn't care. But when you come to God, he's not interested in giving you power. He's interested in a relationship. The power is a derivative of a relationship. Are we together? You must value intimacy if you want to see revival happen. You must value intimacy. A man of God was escorting another man to the grave of William Branham and just for a side tour. And while they went, as they got close to the vicinity of that grave, suddenly he found out he was walking alone. And he turned and he found the other man just standing there shaking like a leaf and saying, what is happening to me? He was coming close to the grave of a man who had died for a long time. But the residue of that secret place was still there. When you become a person of the secret, you can shake someone. Good afternoon, sir. And that person returns to his shop and places that same hand and does not know what is suddenly bringing customers. You are a living extension of the ark of his presence. It's not about preaching. Hallelujah. So someone can say, Pastor, I, I just passed you all. I came to drop water and I found out the growth has gone. You brought heaven unconsciously. Most miracles are not just products of a casual preparation. Oh God, I have a miracle meeting this night. Please bless people. There's no need to fear when you have a track record of his presence because your assignment is to create the atmosphere for his presence to come. And if you something that is your habitation, it will happen naturally. Most of the things that we really call miracles are 
the fruits of genuine intimacy many of the people who later would carry mighty miracle ministries did not plan to have it it was the depth of their staying power with god they noticed when they came out every time they ministered there were strange occurrences please desire intimacy for some of you maybe after this conference you must trust god to wrap up the year and run for a retreat and just go and sit down there and say lord i'm here again the last time I was here was many years ago, but your boy is back. The prodigal son came to himself and said, I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. And I am not worthy to be called your son, but take me as one of your servants. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up. Number two. What is the second prize for true revival? Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Psalm 25 and verse 14. We reign and we legislate in this system on the strength of the mysteries of the kingdom that we have access to. The Bible says the secret of the Lord so God has secrets. There is no great man who gives access to every information to everybody. Please look up. If I come to pastor's house, your, any pastor here or your bishop or any man of God, if I come to your house, you have a living room, is that true? You have a kitchen, you have other inner chambers. Only there is no responsible man who brings a visitor from day one and says, come. Come into my bedroom. Look at where I keep money. Look at where. No, you don't do that. There are visitors who come to. They are in your house. But where in your house are they? Some of them can stay at the gate. That is where your trust for them kept them. If they earn the right and the trust grows, the next time they will come to your living room. But there are people who are so close to you, you can even bring them. They are sitting on your bed. Your wife is sitting on the bed. They are there. They can even sit on the ground because of that depth of intimacy there are chambers in the spirit and not everywhere is accessible to everybody let me tell you sincerely the secret of the Lord is not with them who are born again is with them that fear him is the word Yirat Adonai the fear reverence for God and the Bible says he will show them his covenants. Do you know what that means? Come, let me show you the secrets that control this cosmos. And he will open your eyes to see. And on the strength of what you have seen, you will return back and begin to do exploits in the spirit. We must access the secrets of the kingdom. In Revelation chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8. Revelations 3 from verse 7 and 8. It says, And the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, and he that had the key of David. Do you know what that means? That is a mystery because keys stand for access. There was something that David found David, the man after God's heart. The key was named in honor of him. The key of David. And that whoever has that key, he can open. There are things you can open, but they can be shut again. Because they were not opened by the key of David. You can open the destinies of men and they leave your church and they are, it's shut again in the evening. But not when you possess this mystery. It's called the key of David. That with it you can open anything and it will remain open. And you can shut it, it will remain shut. Do you have that key? It is with that key you stand and speak upon men that your destiny be open. And no power, no enchantment, no divination under this earth has a way to shut that door again. Hold the key of David. I can open a door that no man can shut and shut a door that no man can open. I had a vision years ago 
and in that vision I saw a very big door bishop like an ancient door and it had smaller doors connected to it and those doors were opening and closing opening and closing and every time the door would open light would just come out of it and on every small door a scripture was written on it and the Lord was revealing to me something to me from that vision he said every time the, the revelation of a scripture is imprinted upon your spirit the light that comes from that door is the grace to validate that revelation you have caught so every revelation you claim to have caught and you did not catch the grace to prove its reality you have not caught it even if you have written books about it so every time God shows me something I'm not quick to teach it I wait has the light to be able to demonstrate this thing has it come I write these things unto you O excellent Theophilus of all that Jesus began to do Are we together? Light. You must cry not just for revelation. You can read a book. You can open your Bible. You can search and all you are reading is a storybook. Can I tell you this? Isaiah 29 verse 11. I hope I, get, I got it. We have to rush. Isaiah 29 and verse 11. Please read it if you are a Christian. It's projected. One to read and the vision of all is become unto you stop what is happening to the book the book is what sealed not closed sealed so you can open the book and yet it is still sealed the visions that are in a book but that book is sealed not closed it says which men deliver to one that is educated saying use your education to read what is written here and his result is i cannot why for it is sealed this is beyond the realm of intellect next verse and the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i'm not even learned in the first place there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned stand barren. You will need the spirit of revelation to open your eyes. The words of a book that is sealed. So you will be surprised that you are reading and reading and reading and you will never see anything. But then when the seals are broken, suddenly your eyes begin to see. You must cry not just for the grace to study scripture but the spirit of revelation it was on account of this that paul was praying over the church of ephesus in chapter 1 reading from verse 15 down that the eyes of their understanding being enlightened or flooded with light that ye may know flooded with light thou will show us the part of life it is in your light that we see light Pray for the spirit of revelation. Can I tell you this? Church and ministry will remain mysteriously painful when the people who come and sit under your care are not fed with genuine light. We live in a world right now where there are so many options and the impatience of members has heightened again and again. They don't have the patience to sit down under any church or any assembly that will not feed them with quality, word, life applicable kingdom truths. If you don't have the spirit of revelation after two months you'll be tired. You will preach everything you know. You will spend the other two months preaching all that your friends have preached. You will spend the other two months preaching all you found in the internet. By the sixth month, you are really tired. This ministry is for years and for your lifetime. You must tap into an endless supply. It, otherwise, you know, someone called me one time and said, Apostle, how do you do it? In a week, I don't know how many sermons you preach. And the topics sometimes are east and west. I told them, I said, I'm not doing anything. I've only found a fountain 
a fountain whose streams never, never, never go down. Our fathers before us used to organize meetings for 60 days. Morning, evening, morning, evening, morning, evening. Papa Hagen and all these people, they would preach morning, evening and not be tired. Something is wrong with the fountain we are drawing from. We must pray and say, God, lead me to that rock again lead me to that fountain let there be an endless supply of revelation there are only 52 weeks in a year it should not bore you that you lack a salmon no there's too much that is done in this scripture please pray whilst you are seated lord the miracle of open eyes break that seal for me someone is praying this may be the reason why your church is not growing pray this may be the reason why increase is not coming you may be sincere but will God bring people that you can feed? I will give you pastors after my heart. Paru sesia bakatosha latanda senekata. Access to revelation, O God. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Let me see you in the name of Jesus. Shanan Saparato Secretesikata. Open the books of the Bible. Let my eyes see. Let me draw forth life applicable truths first for my life and then to feed the blessed people you have connected to me. Lord, I am tired of just rigmaroling, teaching what is not life applicable teachings. I know that I'm not feeding the people. Simon Bajona lovest thou me more than this. He said feed my sheep feed my lamb feed my sheep feed my lamb show that you love me as a man of God by the quality of the teachings you give my sheep hallelujah hallelujah one of the ways that we trigger the spirit of revelation is by the attitude of study. Study to show yourself approved, the Bible says. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Every man of God must have a library of quality resources from people with proven records. Not just people you like, people you need. If you listen only from people you like, you will never rise. And in the night when others are sleeping, you are awake. Salut sabratakata. Spirit of revelation come upon me. Open me to this. And from that time alone with God, the series for the next six weeks comes. And you will be surprised. There are people who have done who have written books and preached certain sermons that bless them. Most of my teachings today that continue to bless the body of Christ, even the name came to me by revelation. It's not that I just wrote it like that. It came by the Spirit. When it comes from eternity, it will last. The reason why we sing songs of Bob Fitz and Don Moen and those songs don't die is because they were not composed. They came from a dimension that is eternal. Hallelujah. The spirit of revelation. Miracles, signs and wonders can draw people to your church. But it is the word of God that builds people. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace not i commend you to the miraculous not i commend you to the gifts of the spirit not i commend you to the apostolic and the prophetic when it has to do with building and establishing men the formula is i commend you first to god then to the word of his grace he said it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified men and women of god please listen to me Thank God for the power of the miraculous. And we need to understand this. Thank God for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But can I tell you this? It will take more than miracles to build people. 
they saw Jesus heal the sick, raise the dead, but some still doubted when he resurrected. It is the word of God that purifies. It is the word of God that creates maturity in the believer. We must turn our altars into platforms where the word of God is taught. I submit to you that on the average, and I say this respectfully, I only say this because I'm talking to men and women of God. The average, you can pick a believer at random, outside, in a marketplace, anywhere, and just discuss with him on the matters of the kingdom and you will find out the scorecard is very low the the spiritual understanding of a territory is a reflection of the quality of the men of god within that territory and the word that they communicate we must trust god that our members become matured their maturity will help us to find rest hallelujah if not, you will labor on members for 10 years. And because the only thing they receive is miracles, one person can come from somewhere and in five minutes, he has swayed their heart forever. These are people you've labored with for five years. But because there was no stamina through the word, members must be matured. They must be matured. That spiritual maturity that comes by the Spirit. Teach them the word. If I call, let me use one person, just come. Any one person at all. Come, please, quickly come. Watch this. If I run an interview for this gentleman now, I'm not going to embarrass you, don't worry. How long have you been born again? Can you remember? Oh, not up to a year. Oh, praise God. Now, you're a good example. Now, imagine that this guy just got born again, maybe a few months ago now. And when this guy becomes five or six years old in the Lord, and I come like a believer trying to vet his understanding, and I say, so tell me the things you have learned about the kingdom. What do you know about the doctrine of scripture? What do you know? Can you lead another man to Christ? And can you mature him? Call an average church member. Attach a new convert. And say build this person into a strong person. He does not even know what to do. Do you know that? The only thing he just knows is. Okay do you know what? Are you born again? Yes. Let me try to get you filled with the Holy Ghost. He struggles around there. As if he's, he's, as if he's, he's, he's reciting a, a satanic charm. Just to get someone filled with the Holy Ghost. And when that is done. He doesn't know what else to do. Follow me to my church, he says. Let's go. That is his idea of spiritual maturity. Something is wrong. The reason why there is no consistency of growth within a territory is there is no defined formula for spiritual growth that the people can have. After five or six months or two years, he's one of the frequent faces you see in the church. So naturally, you will make him a deacon. Or naturally you make him something now remember see how immature this man is now he has come to a position of leadership and now he does not understand anything about death to the flesh he does not understand the principles of prayer humility character he does not understand the mysteries that can turn things these are the things that make us matured in the spirit now this guy is leading 50 people he can lead he will only lead from the lens of his limitation Believers must be matured. That's why little things that shake them. He does not know that there is a price to following God. Suddenly little persecution comes on account of the word. Pastor, I'm tired. I'm leaving this church. I want peace of mind. I'm, I'm, and you are saying after how many years? Because there is no stature and stamina. Pastor, I, I, I love God, but there's no man coming to marry me. I've been seven years in this church. Thank you for all. I, I, I need to marry. I need to. And you say, ah, were you not mentored that you must love God more than the things of this world? Is the entire pursuit for God centered around the mundane things? Please, let's, let's be intentional about building the people that God brings in our lives. Most of what happens in the body of Christ... It's just topical sermons and I don't have a problem with it 
but we must create systems to build believers in doctrine that they may be established and they may be strong so I just pick one scripture and Jesus said it is well that becomes my sermon no problem with that but that is not going to build a believer sustainably so when the challenges of life come our people are very weak they cannot stand Jesus took time to teach them when you begin to read the, 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 the character of his teachings he started with what we call the Beatitudes teaching them the culture and the character of the kingdom then he got to a point where he was contrasting all they had known from the scribes and the Pharisees you say this in your law but this is what I'm introducing to you now he mentored them powerfully so when he left they had that stability We must build people we must build people in truth we must build people in power that the average believer when there is an attack in their life they are not just thinking pastor first they will worry you there is an attack they remember that sermon oh james 5 13 is any man afflicted let him pray my wife where are you come let's do what pastor has taught us now you see that and they begin to pray when it works for them they only bring the testimony and say thank you for your mentorship thank you for your leadership thank you for your discipleship you have cultured us to understand now we ourselves have become signs and wonders we must not train a need-driven people who continue to hold on to our clothes for everything pastor pray for me pastor fast for me pastor do this one for me you are about to sleep they say wake up they blackmail you with their problems let them be matured and take responsibility thank you hallelujah there are many people today who blame pastors for their problems i called you by 2 a.m you didn't pray for me and now look at now my leg if you had prayed for me no but i taught you were you not listening You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Let me give us the last key and we'll pray. This is probably one of the reasons why we are gathered here. The third prize for true revival is an unusual dimension of the anointing of the Spirit upon your life. Not just the anointing, an unusual dimension. Psalm 89 from verse 20 to 24 I have found David my servant look up please I found David since but I could not anoint him because I was looking for my servant I found David from birth but I could not anoint David because David had not become my servant yet. He didn't say, I have found David. I found David, but I was waiting till David became my servant. That is a very long journey. When you just read that, you say, I found, no, 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 no. I found Joshua Selman, but I had to wait until the dealings of the spirit carved him into becoming my servant. It is my servant I am looking for to anoint, not David. I found you, but the anointing has been hanging, waiting until the day you are turned to become my servant. The hallmark of sonship mysteriously is servanthood. Let this mind be in you, Philippians chapter chapter 2 from, uh, uh, from verse 5. It says which was in Christ Jesus and he says even though he was God he did not consider it robbery but he humbled himself he proved his sonship in his servanthood 
hallelujah that he made himself of no reputation he came and died even the death of criminals wherefore on account of that God had so highly exalted him given him an office that is above any other that every time you invoke that office that all the systems must come into alignment and that office was captured in a name the name is not Jesus the name is Lord Jesus was not a name God gave him Jesus was a name his mother gave him as revealed even the angels said he will be called this he will be called that he will be called this you'll be called that but then when he was on earth they gave him that name as a means of identification in the beginning was the word the rider upon the horse having a name that no man knew his name is the word of God when that coronation happened in heaven the name that was given to Jesus is Lord Lord means absolute owner controller that was what the psalmist saw in chapter 24 when he said the earth is the Lord's that means whoever has this office is the owner of the earth Lord So when you say in Jesus' name, nothing happens because you are only calling the Jewish name of a man. The power is in his lordship. The revelation of his lordship is really where the power, that is the administrative office of heaven. We only call the name Jesus so that people will know that the Lord we are talking about is not a judge in court. That that Lord is the one who became Jesus, Yeshua when he walked upon the earth but the revelation is not j-e-s-u-s is why it doesn't work it is a consciousness of lord if you have that consciousness even if you don't pronounce the name the demons know what they are hearing hallelujah number three an unusual dimension of the anointing i have found david i got distracted please let's go back there my servant and then with my holy oil have I anointed him with whom my hand shall be established my arm shall also strengthen him we're reading to 24 the enemy as a result of that anointing shall not exact upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him verse 3 I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him for but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted please hear me it truly takes a superior dimension of the anointing to bring principalities and powers that control territories under the obedience of the Christ Psalm 66 and verse 3 say unto God how terrible art thou in your ways that it is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies the greatness of thy power that means the degree to which your enemies submit is a measure of the power that you control through the greatness not the availability the extent the greatness of thy power acts chapter 10 and verse 38 peter was teaching in the house of cornelius the salmon that would now graft the Gentiles to become part of this commonwealth. He said, how God anointed. Not just that God anointed. Look at the extent to which he anointed Jesus of Nazareth. With the Holy Ghost and with power. And as a result, he went about doing good. It takes more than a good heart to do good. It takes more than sympathy to do good. Isaiah 61 the spirit of the Lord is upon me he said the messianic prophecy because he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor or the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those that mourn verse 3 to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion giving them beauty for ashes joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness to the end that they might be called oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he 
through their life and their exploits might be glorified john 15 and verse 8 he said herein is my father glorified that means this is how god is glorified through the saints when ye bear much fruit not little fruit notable results when that happens galatians 1 24 becomes the reality in your life and they glorified god in me they glorified god the extent of the signs the wonders the miracles the mighty things they glorified god i lift my hands to you you're the awesome god i lift my voice to you awesome I lift my hands You're the awesome God Hallelujah We're wrapping up now Unusual dimensions of the anointing for as long as you are generally anointed there will be no place for you in this end time ministry I submit to you sincerely for as long as you are generally anointed I'm anointed too uh -uh. the space is for shifters of systems unusual dimensions of the anointing dimensions of power that dumbfounds principalities and powers this is a notable miracle we cannot hide it how do you hide this let me tell you this when god wants to announce your ministry it does not take time he just needs to find something that is notable enough and he will do something through your life and then do it again and then do it again and then do it again before they finish talking about what he did yesterday fire has brought another one today fire has brought another it will do you more than what posters can do billboards many times are wonderful but if we are not careful they are a revelation of the low level fire we carry there there is i'm not saying anything is wrong with that but there is only so much a billboard can do there is only so much a poster can do when the palliatives were looted in Nigeria, nobody put a poster and said, this is where it is. The moment they find food there, they will run, they will climb the zinc, they will tear. If you become like that warehouse, people will follow you like they follow the warehouse. I tell you this. Enough of these begging members. Beg, please come to my church. If you are not happy, you can go. Come on now, please. This is not to sponsor pride but there is a nobility there is an honor that genuine priesthood carries that when men see you they begin to rejoice they say finally Zali I continue to pray every time and I say oh God increase and multiply this fire increase and multiply this grace if you are not on fire men will be tired of seeing you i promise you they will be excited when they come for your few conferences they will be excited when you come into a city but the ones that now stay with you in church they become too familiar because there's nothing supernatural for them to see they are tired of seeing you tired of hearing the same thing they can almost predict what you will preach and they get to a point where they are weary you change clothes because of your appetite for new things you change hair because of your appetite for new things and if the anointing does not become ever increasing members will be tired they will love you but they will leave are we together that every time there is something god is doing in your life there is something god is doing in the church there is a genuine non-stage managed manifestation of the power of god provable here and now 
not testimonies of what God did before I, I used to know God did this remember you were there that day you know what Jesus Christ the same yesterday today don't just talk about the God of yesterday uh -uh. there is nothing more convincing than seeing the reality of the things that you demonstrate here and now when you tell people God can anoint let them see it when you say God can lift let them see it when you say God can change let them see it when when they have a track record of your integrity with God nobody will take your word for granted I hope you I'm, I'm not being forgive me I'm not just shouting at you you, you get the point now it's a wake-up call listen listen to me it's not because of tribe I assure you it's not because of your personality no Apostle, why do people just come receive miracles and run back? All that is a joke, I tell you. John Wesley says, set yourself on fire and the world will come and watch you burn. You don't know the degree of inconvenience people can go through when they are sure that they will find genuine fire. A herbalist lives in a place where you walk as if you are going to the end of the earth before you meet him and when politicians are desperate even if it's to walk backward they will go backward who are you remove your shoe they, they, I am senator remove your shoe and they remove it because they want to win election there is a level of fire that when you carry almost every other factor becomes endurable if they know they will get they will endure everything Apostle, we are not doing well because of the timing. The venue we are using only allows us to use in the morning and people are sleeping. It's a lie. It's because I have, I'm in an area where there are many civil servants. So in the weekday they are working, it's still a lie. The hospital is always full of patients. Always. The hospital does not go around looking for patients. No. The pharmacy is always full of people. There is no market that is empty. Even days when it's not the market day. Someone can come and quickly say, let me carry something. Unusual. Please, men of God. You have to get, get past this level of nominal anointing. General anointing. You pray for 100 people. One person says, well, it's like I'm healed. He's not even sure. You too, you know nothing left you to the person. Why will people believe you? Be honest with yourself and be honest with those who listen to you. We live in a world where there are options. My brothers and sisters, there are options today. There are options. So, Do you know that many miracles that are celebrated in many assemblies, those miracles were not bettered by those people. The members know where they got it from. They just don't want trouble. That's why they return back to share it there. But the truth is they really know where that miracle came from. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekato Kata Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The face of development, Lord.